Let's get a power armoured strike force together for the tabletop with an overview to starting a Space Marine army in Warhammer 40k 10th edition. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics where today we're talking Space Marines and in this video I thought we'd do an overview to starting a Space Marine army in this new edition of the game. In the video we'll talk about why you might want to collect Space Marines in the first place, initial steps that you could take to planning an army, a quick look at a few chapters and then a few ideas for some initial purchases whether it's rules or the different discount sets that Games Workshop has going right now. Loads to talk about so let's jump straight into it. Space Marines in Warhammer 40k are basically about as iconic as it gets for the setting, genetically armoured super soldiers defending humanity against Xenos and heretics, clad in the finest ceramite power armour and making war with bolters, chainswords and enjoying employing aggressive shock tactics to break the enemy. They're organised into somewhat monastic knightly chapters with their own personality, fighting styles, strengths and flaws and there's a lot of scope for drilling into the background of your army and giving a force your own customization. The Space Marine model range from Games Workshop is absolutely enormous, dwarfing any other faction's model choices. There's been a bit of a snowball effect with Space Marines going on, where they're one of the most popular armies and get the best support, making them perhaps one of the more popular armies once more. There's a massive array of power armoured choices, tanks, dreadnoughts and fighting machines, and it does mean that a Space Marine army can have a very different feel from one to the next. Some of the older models are looking a bit on the dated side, but they've had a lot of releases in recent times with the advent of Primaris Marines, and some new models from the Leviathan box with more on the way very shortly. Just for a taster of what you might expect from a Space Marine army, here we've got some First Company Terminator veterans on the top left, enormous walking exo armour with massive might to beat down the foe with their power fists, a veteran intercessor holding a bolt rifle in the centre here, and a sinister walking sarcophagus that is the Redemptor Dreadnought here, has in the shattered remains of a fallen battle brother to take the fight to the enemy anew. Here we've got a hovering gladiator tank, this one's the Lancer version with a great big anti-tank laser destroyer, a Phobos marine on the bottom left with a helix gauntlet to heal his friends, a rather imposing skull mass chaplain to keep the battle brothers in line and lead them in devotion to the emperor and the service of mankind, and a jump pack inceptor on the bottom right, striking from the sky and dual wielding assault bolters. The first lot are all marines out of the newer, more primaris type range, that's been going on for the last 6 years or so. The space marine range is a little bit divided in terms of scale and model looks, these guys are all firstborn models. Games Workshop has been very slowly phasing out the firstborn miniatures, with some direct replacements like Stern Guard and Terminators coming in the last 12 months or so, and a few of the older firstborn character models leaving the range. People absolutely can and do collect armies that are more centred around the firstborn miniatures than the primaris, and you can certainly have a mix of both. I think it would be something to bear in mind when you're collecting space marines though, that there is at least a reasonable chance that some of these firstborn models might not see great support into the distant future. They do have their own charm and appeal though, here's the classic tactical squad on the left with the mixed special weapons in the unit, a land speed at top and centre, a tech marine gunner crewing a thunderfire cannon for a bit of artillery fire support here with some tremor shells, and some classic space marine bikers here, they're some of the oldest plastic kits in the range currently. That's only scratching the surface of the different options available, but perhaps the good news for collecting space marines is that as they're so well supported from Games Workshop and popular, they often tend to be really quite cheap price wise, you tend to not need quite as many miniatures to make up an army which is usually a good thing, and space marines are unusually well supported with the sheer amount of discount kits that they have on offer. Lots and lots of combat patrol sets that cost less than buying the individual models separately, and also featuring it in big starter sets and things like the actual 40k starter sets and the Leviathan box, as we'll get on to later. They're certainly a lot cheaper to play Space Marines than some of the other factions out there. When you get to the tabletop, gameplay wise, Space Marines currently have their rules downloadable from Warhammer Community under Index Space Marines, and due to their big model range, they support most fighting styles that you have out there. Lots of units that specialise in fast melee assault, gun lines with a whole load of scary firepower, biker forces or infiltration and guerrilla forces. A lot of armies choose to do a healthy mix of some of all of the above. I'd say in current 10th edition, maybe range has a slight advantage over close combat troops, and perhaps particularly because that seems to work quite well with the Space Marines army rule Oath of Moment, where you basically get to pick an enemy squad to be your primary target for the turn and hit it with overwhelming force, getting massive damage boosts against it. The other key Space Marine mechanic is combat doctrines within the Gladius Task Force, lots of interesting movement boosts which can allow the Space Marines to take the fight to the enemy a lot more rapidly than they would be able to otherwise. Overall I'd say they're currently medium to strong in current Warhammer 40k, a very strong pool of units and perhaps the ability to focus fire better than most other armies in the game. 
If you do choose to collect a Space Marine army, then when you're just starting out, it's probably worth learning as much as you can about the faction. With Space Marines, there's basically just about endless content out there, particularly if you start digging into all the backstory from the Horus Heresy. For the game rules, I'd probably start out with Index Space Marines, which, as we mentioned, is freely available to download at time of recording, or you could pick up the Index cards, as we'll get onto in a second. For other army building things, you could think about Battlescribe or Warhopedia for messing around with army lists once they update, plus Games Workshop's app as well for rules and army lists as well. That's free at time of recording, though apparently they're going to pay war later at some stage. If you wanted to try out a game with Space Marines, then you could try Tabletop Simulator, that's one unofficial way to play Warhammer 40k virtually, or just proxy the miniatures to try them out in a battle. There's a massive amount of content here on YouTube as well. I'll certainly be trying to keep the Space Marine content coming here on All Specs Tactics. I made a few Space Marine videos already, including a tier list of units and an index overview for them, and a few unit reviews as well. On other channels, you'll find battle reports, painting guides, and lore in abundance, all sorts of things. And you can also get a lot of interesting info from checking out other social media, Discord servers, Facebook groups, or subreddits. Quite a lot of individual chapters have their own, as well as just Space Marines in general for a few of them. From there, I'd try and get an idea as to what sort of force you want your Space Marine army to look like. People go a lot of different ways with this. You could build a balanced force just taking the units that are somewhat effective or you like the look of. Or you could try and skew your army to a specific sort of list. Try and make a brutal Space Marine gun line with a ton of bolters and high power las cannons and plasma guns and things. You could play very close combat heavy, maybe pick up a chapter like Black Templars or Blood Angels maybe. Or go very heavy on big fighting machines, maybe even a Space Marine tank force. Or an indomitable force of dreadnoughts. You could certainly theme your army around a specific chapter from the lore, either in terms of look and feel of the army, or actually building around their special characters' unique rules, say White Scars Bikers or Imperial Fist Bolter Gun Lines. I'd say using one of the sources above, I'd probably think about messing around with a 500 point or 2000 point target list for a first experiment. You can find that with Index Space Marines to download, plus the Minotaur and Field Manual, all in the download section on Warhammer Community. As you're thinking about this sort of thing, it's probably worth painting up a test model or two to try out your colour scheme. I'd probably go for something fairly standard, maybe an Intercessor, Tactical Marine, Infernus Marine or Terminator. Nice places to start as a standardish model for your army. And then just make sure you're happy with the colour scheme before going mad and putting it on every single model. Space Marines perhaps aren't the hardest army to paint. Lots of big white flat panelling. Can be a little bit more intensive if you want to go the edge highlighting route as you'll see on quite a lot of the 40k box art. That can take some time to do comparatively. I think at this point it's probably worth mentioning Space Marine chapters as well. These are the armies that Space Marines tend to fight in, representing all sorts of colours of the rainbow. In Space Marine organisation there's a bunch of chapters that are better known. Six of the less divergent ones and five of the more divergent ones. You could certainly follow one of these guys' colour schemes and base your army around either their lore or gameplay. Though you can absolutely just make up your own chapter's colour schemes and paint them up how you'd like. Sometimes that does have its own advantages, as you wouldn't get any questions between jumping between different rule sets for different games. It can allow you to try out some other rule sets if you fancy shaking it up a bit. After the less divergent chapters, we've got the Ultramarines on the top left, perhaps the poster boys of 40k, some Roman themes in their army, and striving for tactical balance and codex mastery. They've got really quite a lot of special characters, including Marnius Kalgar and the Primarch Rebute Gilliman himself. Then the mighty Salamanders, who like their melters and flamers, white scars that favour bikes and shock assault tactics, the cold calculating iron hands with heavy use of bionics and affinity for vehicles and favour firepower, the stalwart imperial fists, who like their bolter gun lines and epic last stands, and the sneaky shadowy raven guards that enjoy guerrilla warfare and stealth tactics and assassinating enemy commanders. All of these have at least one special character model as well that you can choose to lead your army, but for the most part in 10th edition you don't actually get special rules just literally depending on which one of these chapters that you choose, it's just mainly the choice of special character that you have to lead them. Otherwise we've also got some more divergent chapters as well, these are the ones that stand a bit apart from the rest of the Space Marine crowd. They all have their own set of index cards and they will get their own codexes when they release, mainly because they just do things a bit differently to standard Space Marines and often have their own sets of unique units that fight a bit differently, like Blood Angels Sanguinary Guard, Black Templar Crusader Squads, or the big plasma weapon firing Dark Angels Landspeed of Vengeance. Going through these, the Red Armored Blood Angels are the tragic sons of Sanguinius, bloodthirsty in combat and have the risk of succumbing to the Black Rage, going insane and joining the Death Company to seek an honourable death in combat. 
the sneaky and shadowy Dark Angels, often attempting to hunt down the Fallen, but things might be changing a bit for them with the return of their Primarch, Lionel Johnson. The zealous Crusading Knights of the Black Templars, burning the Witches and Heretics alike, a chapter that's always on Crusade through the stars. The Viking and Wolf fixated Space Wolves, with Savage Berserkers and Space Marines that ride Wolves of Degenerated into Savage Wolfen. And then the Inquisitor forces of the Xenos hunting Death Watch, specialising in teleport assault tactics and engaging the enemy at close range with fun varieties of special issue ammunition. Choosing a chapter can be quite a big choice, particularly some of these more divergent ones, as will greatly affect which units that you have access to, perhaps particularly so after the Codex has come out. Talking of which though, let's talk about ideas for first purchases when getting a Space Marine collection off the ground, starting with rules and then going on to miniatures. Currently Space Marines and 40k are kind of in a bit of a limbo, we've just had the massive launch release of the Leviathan box for 10th edition with a whole load of cheap Space Marines, but we also know that Codex Space Marines is going to be coming out in autumn, that's going to be the new army book which is going to update quite a lot of things for them and also give them a bunch of new models as well. Could mean it's not the worst time to get into them though, as you know they're going to get some interesting support soon and now's a good time to get some forces off the ground. For army rules, you can just use the downloadable ones from Warhammer Community, as we mentioned. You could potentially try and pick up this set of index cards that you can see here, which is a kind of handy tabletop guide to actually have the rules of the army to hand rather than scrolling through PDFs. I'd say these are at least relatively good value for Games Workshop rules cost. A lot of places have sold out for them though. You might be able to find some from third parties or on eBay potentially. I feel like they're helpful enough to have in the interim if you can pick some up. If not though, then probably just make do with the PDFs until the Space Marine Codex comes out. That will invalidate these, so if you just don't pick them up, then I guess you'll have saved a bit of money there in the long run. If you're going for one of the more divergent chapters, so Blood Angels, Black Templars and the like, they have their own index cards with just their unique units in. If you wanted both ones from generic Space Marines and their own unique ones, you need to have both of them or look at both different PDFs. The divergent chapters will also have their own Codex releases too. The one that comes out in autumn is just the standard Space Marines one. I believe that the first one out of the Divergent chapters is coming out in spring and that will be the Dark Angels. A good chance for them to get some exciting new miniatures there for that particular faction. Otherwise if you just wanted some lore and pictures to take a look at then you can usually get past versions of Codex Space Marines fairly cheap online. The rules will be outdated but any of the lore, background and miniature galleries could still be pretty helpful. But there is plenty of stuff available just free online for that as well. Overall I'd say that the index cards though aren't maybe an absolutely necessary purchase, they're kind of nice to have. Once the codex is out though, you probably will need that to play most games of 40k. Particularly if you're newer to a faction, it is quite a handy reference. And should have a code in to unlock content on the 40k app if you've got that. Rules aside though, moving on to the more exciting stuff in the miniatures. Typically when starting a Warhammer 40k army, I'd usually start with a kit of some fairly basic infantry, or a big discount box that gets a lot of models in one place for a cheaper price than Games Workshop normally sells for. If you decided just to dip a toe into the faction with a first infantry kit, maybe something like some intercessors or assault intercessors would be pretty reasonable. Just some standard guys to hold objectives and be some of the most basic models in the faction to allow you to just try out some paint schemes and get a feel for the standard stuff before you go being more adventurous with vehicles or bigger units. Maybe after them something like an initial character to lead the army could be a good choice as well. In games of 40k you generally start by adding at least one character to your army, so that could be a good one to get at least fairly soon on the priority list. If you do want to start with a slightly bigger box and a small self-contained force though, there are a lot of options for discount kits for Space Marines and Warhammer 40k. Perhaps most notably currently are the miniatures from the Leviathan box, which are really quite cheap for the amount of points and models that you get. There's also all manner of combat patrol box sets that work for Space Marines though, there's Dark Angels, Blood Angels, Space Wolves and Death Watch ones, though all of those are absolutely usable for any Space Marine force, you don't have to stick on their fancy shoulder pads unless you want to. Otherwise there's also the new and upcoming 40k starter sets of Space Marines vs Tyranids, and past box sets such as Combat Patrol Space Marines, the one with the Phobos troops and suppressors and things. We'll go through each of those in a second, but when buying 40k miniatures it's worth bearing in mind the options. Lots of newer players often prefer just to order direct from Games Workshop, it is the most obvious and most reliable, but also often the most expensive as well, and there aren't even 100% guarantees to have stock of their own miniatures in place. Particularly around 10th edition they have been selling out of quite a lot. In general I tend to do most of my buying through friendly local gaming stores, either just picking things up in person or ordering them in online. They basically sell exactly the same thing as, as Games Workshop but at discounted prices, 
usually around about 10 to 20 percent off. If you were thinking about ordering any 40k kits online, then Element Games in the UK gives a 10 to 20 percent off Warhammer. That's linked down in the video description. And there's also ones linked down there for Noble Knight Games in the USA. That's usually around about 8 percent off. Or Gap Games in Australia, which is quite a nice one with a big 20 percent off most models. The links below are affiliate links and do help support the channel. They don't cost any more to use. I think it's usually best to economise a little bit when you can. Warhammer's kind of expensive, and even if you're not just saving the money, then more money saved could mean more models down the line. But also bear in mind the second-hand market. eBay is often worth a look for getting things far cheaper even than local gaming stores, often pre-assembled and pre-painted to variable quality, but it can be a way to save you a whole ton of time, effort and money. And it can be a very quick, easy and cheap way to get a big army on the go fast. Finally, also bear in mind 3D printing and third-party manufacturers. Lots of people make their own sort of not Space Marine versions or different parts that could be compatible with Games Workshop Space Marines, say alternate insignia to have some sculpted bits for shoulder pads perhaps, or options for cool custom bits like different heads or alternate swords or weapons and things to make some Space Marines look very, very cool. There's really quite a lot of stuff out there to allow you to tailor a collection for your purposes. Getting into actual kits though, the Leviathan box at the moment is quite a good deal for Space Marines. I'm sure a lot of people watching will be well aware of it. It's £150, €200 Euros or $250. Contains Space Marines, Tyranids and the 40k core book plus some mission cards. And for the Marines you get 4 different characters, 5 Terminators, 10 Infernus Marines, 5 Stern Guard and the big shooty Ballistas Dreadnought. All of that's around about 950 points worth of Space Marines plus lots and lots of Tyranids as well. Even if it were just for the Space Marines, that wouldn't be a terrible deal from Games Workshop standards, and particularly if you can split or resell the Tyranids. It is out of stock at in a fair few places around the world, though you might see some in third-party sellers. From places with a big eBay market, though, like say the UK or the USA, I'd be quite tempted to pick up either individual units or one half of the box for fairly cheap. From a quick search recently, it looks like the Space Marine half's going for around about £80-ish in the UK, or $130 in the USA. By Games Workshop standards, that's really quite good for this many Marines. If there's anything specific that you want, or you want multiple copies of, again you can get uh, several of them really quite cheap. The Terminators do seem to be in a bit higher demand compared with the rest though, and are going for a bit more than most. I'd say all the units inside it are usable enough in game, some are a bit better than others, the Terminators and Stern Guard are quite nice, and the Infernus Marines can be quite nice for overwatching on objectives admittedly. Another upcoming option are the 40k starter sets. They're actually releasing this weekend at time of recording, so not long to wait there. There's three different levels, and I feel like if you're mainly trying to get miniatures from them, then probably you're looking at either the starter set or the ultimate starter set. The starter set one is definitely the most focused on the models, getting a Terminator Captain, five Terminators and five Infernus Marines, plus some Tyranids as well. I'd say for the £65, €85 Euros or $110, it's an enormously good deal if you factor in the Tyranids as well. Then you could perhaps either pick it up and split the box with someone else who collects Tyranids, or potentially resell the Tyranids online if you didn't have a use for them yourself. The other option for the starter sets is the ultimate starter set, which adds in terrain, a Terminator librarian, some barb gaunts, and a small core rules book as well. That one is really quite significantly more expensive though, at £125, €160, Euros, or $210. If the terrain and the mini rule book will be handy to you, then perhaps that could be worth it. I feel like it is quite a big jump though, for not really all that many more models if you're looking to start a Space Marine army. I guess it does allow you to have Combat Patrol Space Marines, which is basically just this force plus that Terminator Librarian. Though you could just get this one and pick up the Termi Librarian separately if you'd like. Finally for the Space Marine discount options, we've got many flavours of Combat Patrol. As mentioned, these ones are sort of titled as per the Divergent sub-factions, but in reality at least these four are perfectly fine to use for basically any Space Marines, as they're pretty generic models. The Death Watch one I'd say is probably one of the weakest though. It gets you the Primaris Apothecary, a Lieutenant, 10 Intercessors and 3 Aggressors, plus 2 Death Watch upgrade frames if you have a use for those. It's still not bad with a small discount if you're going to get these models anyway, I think one of the criticisms here though is that just having two characters in the box set makes it feel a little bit on the small side models wise, plus the Lieutenant is one that you could easily just kit bash out of a standard Intercessor or something if you had a mind to. All of these are £95, €125 Euros, or $160, they often tend to have around about a 30%-ish discount compared with buying the kit separately, so aren't too bad in getting a fair amount of points, plus can let you play the Combat Patrol game from another faction's point of view. The Space Wolves one comes with a Primaris Battle Leader with a Power Axe, 
10 intercessors, 5 reavers, an invicta warsuit, and some space wolf bits. The battle leader does have a bit of a space wolf's appearance, but I'm sure with a little bit of converting you could make him work for any army. The Blood Angels one maybe doesn't feel enormously Blood Angels with its unit mix, but I would say it's just quite a good all-round starter force for Space Marines, an Impulsor, Intercessors, Aggressors, a small squad of Incursors or Infiltrators, plus a Primaris Librarian. Quite a good well-rounded force with a bunch of different battlefield roles there, I think. And finally, the Dark Angels one I'd say is quite similar. Again, some very useful models and a good central part to a force, a Primaris Chaplain, Three Inceptors to strike from the sky and drop down very close to the enemy, the powerhouse that is the Redemptor Dreadnought, and again a squad of five intercessors. Those are the kits that are currently on sale from Games Workshop, but bear in mind that there is an old Space Marine Combat Patrol that you might see floating around as well. This one's the fairly Phobos armor themed one with your sneaky scout style Space Marines, maybe good for some chapters more than others perhaps. And again this one was a fairly decent deal on the amount of points that you got on the box. 10 Sneaky Infiltrators, 3 Sniping Eliminators, 3 Auto Cannon Wielding Suppressors, an Impulsor Transport, and a Phobos Lieutenant. I'd bear in mind that all of these besides the Impulsor are monopose, so you can't say build the Infiltrators as Incursors, but you do get a fair amount of models for your money for this one. Games Workshop doesn't distribute this one anymore, but you might find it quite commonly from third party sellers or second hand. If you want to have a bit of an infiltration wing to your army, this one could be alright. If it were me, I'd probably pick up one or two of those various different discount box sets and maybe add in a couple of extra units that I really quite liked, and that should get you well established to the core of a Space Marine army in preparation for the approaching Space Marine Codex that's coming out in autumn. There's going to be a big range update for Space Marines on its way, which we'll find out more about pretty soon. They said that it's going to release in autumn alongside a wave of new miniatures, and it's even possible that we might see them this coming weekend on the 15th of July if Space Marines win that battle at Ogrum campaign. If we do, I'll certainly cover it here on the channel. Rules-wise, a new codex always affects unit strength and power a little bit. Things will work in slightly different ways. And one of the main things it's going to add in is a whole bunch of different ways to play Space Marines. Things like a first company task force, and supposedly armies that are more themed around a biker force or an infiltration themed force. So it should be a fun shake-up and might add a little bit more personality rather than just every army using the Gladius. Alongside that, we'll probably get a whole bunch of multi-part plastic kits from the things from Leviathan. The Terminators and Sturmguard should certainly get multi-part plastic kits. I expect that we'd see the full miniature release of the Brutalist Dreadnought and Desolation Marines from earlier in the year, who haven't been put on full sale yet. There'll be a bunch of Space Marines that haven't been revealed yet. I wouldn't be too surprised if we saw, say, Assault Terminators or Terminator Chaplain, perhaps. And out of more obvious gaps in the Primaris range, things like Primaris Assault Marines or perhaps upscale Space Marine Scouts are both kind of likely, based on what other things that we've seen from Games Workshop's teasers previously. Should be interesting though, I'm sure we'll get some surprises. With that in mind, when slowly expanding an army, I'd definitely have a fair bit of scope for just collecting what you like the look of, with an impending codex shaking up the rules. Maybe don't go too heavy on spamming one niche unit, particularly if it's a bit overpowered. Things often do get balance addressed. I would say there's nothing particularly wrong with picking up a couple of units that are a little bit stronger at the moment. Here are just a few of the units that I would have considered a little bit stronger in-game right now. Maybe just shying away a bit from things that have the potential to be replaced. If you need to down some enemy tanks or knights, Eradicators are still quite efficient for that, even though a bit short-ranged. Hellblasters have now got very general purpose firepower with good AP and a cool rule to fight on death if they overcharge their plasma too much. They're quite nice with Oath of Moment. Bladeguard Veterans are one of the better combat units with damage 2 weapons and get on best with quite a few characters. And a small amount of Infiltrators or Incursors I think help well with a force. The Incursors can scout into the midfield and mark targets for other units shooting things. And the Infiltrators can forward deploy it on a midfield objective and screen out enemy reserves from dropping nearby. Space Marine Armors generally got a fair bit more effective in the new edition as well. Things like the Gladiator Lancer, the Repulsor and Repulsor Executioner. The Redemptor Dreadnought and Storm Speeders are perhaps some of the better picks of the Space Marine motor pool right now, but there's really quite a lot of good stuff out there. Games Workshop also seem to have made most of the characters have at least some niche in the army. Captains, Chaplains, Lieutenants and Tech Marines all can be fielded well based on the squad. I think the normal advice for collecting a 40k army would have a rough end goal in mind of say a 2000 point army list, but of course you can adapt and change as you get more experienced and know what units do what. I'd probably buy units and kits individually or in small chunks and then build towards a larger force bit by bit rather than going whole hog and buying an entire army all in one go. That's probably the highest chance of getting burnt out with painting or picking things that you later come to regret.
Finally, when things are coming together, here's just one example of one strong space marine army list at the moment. This one by a William Furman who used it to take fifth at the Alpine Grand Tournament. I think it's quite a nice example of some stronger space marine stuff right now. Of course, there's lots and lots of different variations that work absolutely fine. Technically, this one comes to a little bit over 2,000 points now as Games Workshop increased the price of the Desolation Squad on their points cost. So you would need to swap out one unit for another one to save a few points somewhere. In any case though, Gilliman's leading this force and it's a gladius task force of the Ultramarines, allowing you to get some big rerolls against two units per turn with all this scary shooting. Gilliman's going to be hard to kill with his own operative special rule, and he's actually being paired with a slightly gamey combo of a lieutenant with a combi weapon here which can hide Gilliman. That might not be an interaction that survives. There's then a Primaris Apothecary here with Bolter Discipline to go with the Desolation Squad. Pretty scary indirect fire space marines that can chew through really quite a lot of enemy hordes. Plus they've got some quite scary direct fire as well with super crack missiles. It went up in points by Games Workshop increasing them recently, but they still remain good I think. There's then a unit of 5 Infiltrators with the Helix Adepts to make them a bit tougher and patch them up in combat. They can forward deploy and screen out some enemy reserves if they want to, or even just guard a home field objective. A squad of 5 Stone Guard Space Marines with bolt rifles and a heavy bolter. Quite powerful Space Marine veteran shooting with devastating wounds on their weapons, plus a shoots twice ability once per game. And then to provide some heavy lifting for the force, there's 5 different vehicles, 3 Redemptor Dreadnoughts with the big Macroplasma Incinerators for some anti-elite firepower, Gatling Cannons, Storm Bolters and an Icarus Pod, and then two dedicated tank killers, a repulsor executioner with a heavy laser destroyer, and a gladiator lancer with the big laser destroyer of its own, and that one gets some very hefty built-in rerolls. Overall a very firepower heavy space marine list, though if the enemy does get too close, Gilliman can absolutely do work in combat, as can the Redemptor Dreadnoughts. So anyway, hope that's provided at least a bit of food for thought for space marine collectors in 40k right now. Let me know what you're thinking at the moment for getting an army together in Warhammer 40k. And experienced generals, feel free to share any advice for newer players down in the comments. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, or I'll certainly keep the Space Room videos coming. If you'd like something else to watch, then here's my overview of the index. I'll leave that link down in the video description if you'd like to check that out. Finally, if you have found the video useful and you'd like to say thanks, or just support the creation of more videos like this, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that link down in the video description below. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.